Hi everybody, welcome to part three of common adult electrocardiographs. As mentioned previously in the previous sections, this Learn Shop is for all nurses and healthcare providers who monitor adult cardiac rhythms and they'll provide you with a methodology which is sequential when attempting to look at and interpret common and uncommon adult ECG arrhythmias and dysrhythmias. The learning objectives for this session are to review common rhythms such as normal sinus rhythm, supraventricular and atrial dysrhythmias, ventricular rhythms and look at life-threatening rhythms. These are more common in adults. Let's review your knowledge again. Which of the following is the normal pacemaker of the heart? A, B, C or D? The correct answer is A, the SA node. Which of the following are components of the conduction system of the heart? A, B, C or D? The correct answer is all of them are. Which of the following statements best represents the P wave? A, B, C or D? The correct answer is atrial depolarization. Four, which of the following statements relates to the sympathetic nervous system? A, B, C or D? The correct answer is all of the above. Which of the following statements about the normal heart rate is correct? A, B, C or D? A is correct. Which of the following relates to the parasympathetic nervous system? A, B, C or is it D? The correct answer is, of course, D. Which of the following pertain to the standard ECG leads? A, B, C or D? The correct answer is D. Which of the following relates to sinus tachycardia? A, B, C or D? None. None relate to sinus tachycardia. Which of the following connect to atrial fibrillation? A, B, C or D? It's D. All of the above. Which of the following then correlates to premature ventricular complexes or atopics or contractions? A, B, C or D? The correct answer is D. Let's see whether you remember now. Name the following ECG anomaly. Premature ventricular complexes and these are couplet. What about this anomaly? Very fast. More than 160. This is supraventricular tachycardia. How about that one? This is coarse ventricular fibrillation. Can you name the following ECG anomaly? You must be able to. This is asystole. What about this one? This is atrial fibrillation with a controlled ventricular response. Okay, now let's review sinus rhythms. We'll look at normal sinus rhythm, sinus tachycardia, sinus bradycardia, and sinus arrhythmia. Now sinus rhythm is a regular rhythm at a rate between 60 and 100 beats per minute at rest. And it has a normal PQRST complex, which you can review in the criteria that we had in the previous learn shop. Sinus tachycardia then is faster. 
It's a fast regular rhythm at a rate greater than 100 beats per minute. It also has a normal PQRST complex. And it's typically associated with normal sympathetic nervous system stimulation, or you can refer to it as the flight or fight response, which occurs in all forms of stress. It can be related to exercise. In abnormal situations, sympathetic nervous system stimulation again, in hypovolemia, hypoxemia, pain, any form of distress. Sinus bradycardia then is a slow regular rhythm at a rate of less than 60 beats per minute with a normal PQRST complex and it's associated with resting, sleeping, parasympathetic nervous system stimulation, but it can occur with nausea and vomiting and in acquired heart disease, and it could be age-related. Sinus arrhythmia, A means without. So sinus without rhythm. So this is an irregular rhythm, and the rate can be variable between 60 and 100 beats per minute with a normal PQRST complex, and typically it's not pathological in adults. And it can be related to physical fitness, sleeping, or vagal stimulation from normal breathing. If we look at supraventricular dysrhythmias, these are rhythms or different rhythms from the atria and they have a different shape P wave or they may have no P wave at all. The supraventricular dysrhythmias and arrhythmias that we're going to look at are PACs, premature atrial complexes, atrial fibrillation and atrial flutter. Premature atrial complexes are premature as they say, which means they're early. And because they're early, they make the rhythm irregular. They have a different shape P wave because they're not coming from the SA node. But however, conduction is normal through the ventricles, so the QRS complex will be narrow, less than 0.12 seconds. And they are typically associated with physical activity, excitement, drinking coffee, cigarette smoking, which are potentially stimulants. In the abnormal situation, hypoxemia, electrolyte anomalies, such as maybe calcium problems, potassium problems, magnesium problems, and they can be related to hypothyroidism, thyroid problems. In atrial fibrillation, this is a very, very irregular rhythm, often referred to as being irregularly irregular. And it has a fibrillatory line, which means there are no P waves. And the atria can fibrillate up to 300 to 700 fibrillations per minute. And the ventricles can respond either quickly, fast or slow. The QRS complex is typically narrow, less than 0.12 seconds. And this is always associated with acquired heart disease, which we sometimes get as we get older. Atrial flutter is a regular rhythm, or it can be irregular. And this is associated with acquired heart disease and getting older as well. But what you typically see are two sawtoothed P waves. They're, they're shaped like shark's teeth, if you want to think of it like that. And the atrial rate can be anything from 300 to about 350 flutters per minute. And the ventricular rate then can be variable, as you can see in the rhythm strip below. You can have a one-to-one -one block, hopefully not. A two-to-one block, three-to-one, four-to-one block. Um, it depends on the situation. But atrial flutter is very, very easily recognized by the saw tooth shaped P waves. Now we're going to review common ventricular dysrhythmias that occur in adults. And ventricular dysrhythmias originate in the ventricles. And because they do, they don't have a P wave. And because they originate from the ventricles, which are very, very big, the QRS complex will be more than 0.12 seconds, and the complexes are huge compared to the normal ECG beat, which you can see in front of you. And they look strange 
and they look bizarre and they look scary because they potentially can be. Ventricular dysrhythmias that we're going to look at are premature ventricular complexes, ventricular tachycardia, ventricular fibrillation and torsades to point and certain variations that are associated with that. When we look at premature ventricular complexes, because it says premature, well they're early. And because they're early, they often make the rhythm irregular. And because they come from the ventricles, they're not associated with a P wave, and they have a wide QRS complex, more than 0.12 seconds, or three small squares. And they can be normal or they can be abnormal. Typically, they're associated with increased physical activity, excitement, which is sympathetic nervous system stimulation, caffeine or cigarette smoking, stimulants, structural heart disease, hypoxemia, electrolyte anomalies, and thyroid problems. They can be unifocal, which means they come from one focus, which means they will have the same shape. But they have all the other things associated with them, no P wave, wide QRS complex greater than 0.12 seconds. But they're unifocal, which means they all will look the same. Then they can be multifocal. Multifocal, they meet all the same criteria, but, becoming, but because they're coming from different areas in the ventricle, they'll have a different shape. And this still makes the rhythm irregular, has no P wave, the QRS is wide. And it could be a sign that there's something more pathological going on. Then you've got couplet. Couplet just basically means a couple. So they can be together, they can be unifocal, they can look the same or they can look different. But because they're together, they're a couple. They can be the same or they can be different shaped PVCs and they do make the rhythm irregular. They still have no P waves associated with them and they are wide complex, more than 0.12 seconds. And they can be something that indicates more severe pathophysiology going on. This is called the R on T phenomenon. And the R on T phenomenon is a phenomenon, as it says, where the R lands on the T wave, the R wave of the abnormal beat, which means the PVC, lands on the T wave of the normal sinus beat, and this can result in a life-threatening rhythm, as you can see, which can result in VT, ventricular tachycardia, ventricular fibrillation, VF, or even torsades de point, which we're going to be looking at. But the premature ventricular complex, the R wave lands on the T wave, and this can result in a life-threatening rhythm. And it's typically associated with acquired heart disease, congenital heart disease, Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome, Lang Long QT syndrome, Brugada syndrome, or electrolyte anomalies, especially hypomagnesemia. But it can be related to hyper or hypokalemia as well. Ventricular tachycardia can be monomorphic, which means it has one shape. It can be positive or it can be negative, depends on the monitoring electrode. But this is a regular rhythm, wide complex QRS, more than 0.12 seconds. There's no associated P wave and the rate, as with all tachycardias, is greater than 100 beats per minute. And this could be acquired as a result of an acute coronary syndrome, age-related, or certain electrolyte anomalies. But it's very, very, very easily recognized. Then you've got torsades de point, which is also known as polymorphic ventricular tachycardia. And torsades de point basically means twisting of the points in French, because it was a French physiologist that discovered it. And this is a very, very irregular rhythm. It's positive and negative. It has a wide QRS complex. If it's recognizable, more than 0.12 seconds. There's no P wave and the rate is typically greater than 300 fibrillations per minute. It's associated with congenital heart disease such as dilated cardiomyopathy, long QT syndrome, Brugada syndrome. It can be associated with hypocalcemia or hypomagnesemia. And it can be related to cardiotoxic medications such as amiodarone, procainamide, quinidine, and sometimes sotalol as well. But it's a very recognizable rhythm. 
And this patient, if they have this rhythm, they can actually be conscious. Not for that long, but they can be conscious initially. Ventricular fibrillation is a further extreme. And ventricular fibrillation can be coarse, very coarse, fine or very fine. And this is a chaotic irregular rhythm with no cardiac output. There's no P wave, there's no QRS complex, and the rate, if you want to determine whether it has a rate, which most of us don't do, is typically between 300 and 600 fibrillations per minute. And it's associated with acquired heart disease, acute coronary syndromes, it's age-related, and electrolyte abnormalities, in particular hyper or hypokalemia. Asystole isn't really a ventricular rhythm, but I've included it here. Asystole basically means nothing. A means without in the Latin. And if it's got no systole, well, there's no contraction. Remember, we see the mechanical cardiac cycle is systole and diastole. Systole means to contract or empty the heart. There's no systole, so there's no cardiac output. There's no rhythm, there's no rate, there's no P wave, there's no QRS complex, there's no cardiac output. And this is associated with end-stage cardiac disease, severe hypoxemia, gross acid-based arrangements, major electrolyte anomalies, hypomagnesemia, hyperkalemia, hyperkalemia. End-stage situations. So let's revise. Okay, this is a 15-year-old male adolescent, and he's complaining of palpitations. Have a look at the rhythm. There's a sinus rhythm with couplet PVCs. You've got a 60 year old male who's asleep in an observation ward. What do you think the rhythm is? This is sinus rhythm. This is a 22-year-old female who's receiving bronchodilator therapy for asthma, selbutamol. What do you think the rhythm is? Sinus tachycardia. A 39-year-old male, he's receiving conscious sedation, maybe midazolam, in the clinic for an endoscopy, let's say. There's a sinus rhythm with unifocal PVCs. Maybe he's a little bit hypoxic. This is a 64-year-old male who's asleep in the post-treatment clinic. Got an irregular rhythm. This is sinus arrhythmia. A 17-year-old female who's having an acute anxiety attack. A bit stressed. This is sinus tachycardia. 58 year old male with a history of congestive heart failure. Irregular rhythm. No discernible P waves. This is atrial fibrillation with a controlled ventricular response. Then you've got a 76-year-old woman with severe malnutrition, a potassium of 2.8 millimoles. What do you think? You should be worried. This is couplet PVCs, but really it leads into ventricular tachycardia. Monomorphic. Hopefully with a pulse. This is a 52-year-old female post-surgery with a magnesium of 0.4 milliequivalents per litre, which should really be around 7.5, 0.75 to about 1. This is sinus rhythm with R on T PVCs. And she could go into VT, ventricular tachycardia. This is the same 52-year-old female post-surgery 
with the serum magnesium still remaining at 0.45 milliequivalents per litre. Now, she's having ventricular bigeminy PVCs. Positive and negative. The same 52-year-old female post-surgery still has a magnesium of 0.45 milliequivalents per litre and she's now gone into code blue coarse ventricular fibrillation. The same 52-year-old female was being resuscitated. And this is one hour after resuscitation. The doctor says, look, I think we better stop. She's an asystole. So, thanks again. This is the end of part three. If you're interested, move on to part four. Thanks a lot. See you in part four.